Only underscore wireless. Please make sure you include the underscore. And this is only underscore wireless TV, of course. Please subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. And hit the like button for your mans and them. So, it looks like Blue Beetle is getting ready to be another flop for DC. Um, I understand that James Gunn is considering this a DCU installment. But, regardless, you're looking at seven movies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven movies in a row for DC and Warner Brothers as a whole that have flopped. And I don't know if we've ever seen this before. I don't know if we've seen seven Fox movies that flop, seven Fox movies that were part of the same universe, seven Sony movies, seven, just seven. I can't get past that number. So I wanted to do a little homework and figure out which movies flopped and speculate about why they flopped. So the first flop was in 2020, Wonder Woman 1984. The first movie was a success, but Wonder Woman 84 was already fighting an uphill battle. It was released during the pandemic at the end of 2020. Um, theaters for the most part were still closed and it was released in theaters in a limited run and at the same time it was released on hbo max this is around the time that um warner brothers was trying to roll out hbo max and um before the snyder cut wonder woman 84 was a big part of that push to get the subscriber base up so um it underperformed at the box office for obvious reasons and um, by most accounts, it was just a weaker version of Wonder Woman. It was a lesser version of Wonder Woman, you know, from the writing to the acting to the screenplay. It, it just was a worse movie all the way around. Um, coming off of Wonder Woman 84, there was Birds of Prey. Now, I don't really have strong feelings about Birds of Prey. I think... Um, I think the studio overestimated the amount of goodwill that Margot Robbie earned or that she created with Harley Quinn. I think her version of Harley Quinn, it's, it's, it's popular, but I don't think it really puts asses in seats necessarily. Um, or maybe it was a mistake to make a Harley Quinn movie that didn't tie directly into um, her relationship with the Joker or I don't know I don't know and on top of the fact that there was a, a, a little known director attached to the Birds of Prey um, not a lot of recognizable faces um, the most recognizable face was Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn and I don't know how many more attempts they're gonna give uh harley quinn before they go ahead and decide that she's not someone that you can build a movie around um coming off of birds of prey there was the suicide squad now the suicide squad was kind of a soft reboot of 2017 suicide squad and it pretty much got everything right that the first one got wrong um the humor was there the jokes landed it had scale, it had spectacle, it had an A-list cast. You know, you got Idris Elba, Margot Robbie, John Cena, among others. Um, and you had James Gunn directing it. And James Gunn has a formula for comic book adaptations that hasn't failed him yet, at least critically. But for some reason, this movie performed woefully at the box office. Um, didn't make its money back, uh, didn't even break even. And it's just one of those weird what ifs. It um, it might have been one of the early signs that maybe superhero movie fatigue is a real thing. Because when good movies fail, all you can do is kind of reach and and speculate about like what led to it. But for whatever reason, the Suicide Squad is as good of a movie as it was. It just it un underperformed, and it was another flop. It was like the third flop for DC for Warner Brothers. Um coming off of the Suicide Squad you had Black Adam um, Black Adam was a movie that 
it's not as bad as the critics said it was. Um, it was watchable, but I've heard critics say that. I've heard reviewers, YouTube reviewers say that it's a movie that feels out of time. It feels like um, one of the early MCU movies, and I'd have to agree with that. It's not breaking any new ground. It's not crossing any new bridges or new territory. It's not showing us anything that we haven't already seen before. It had a serviceable visuals for the most part outside of one really bad like you know shootout sequence where black adam has to stop a bullet or deflect a bullet it looks pretty bad but um it has serviceable enough visuals and um the costume design for some of the characters was pretty interesting dr fate was a highlight of the movie pierce brosnan was great but it um suffered from not having enough excitement surrounding it to begin with um i think the decision to not connect black adam and shazam was a mistake for both franchises uh for the universe as a whole um the snyderverse never got off to a great start it didn't have a billion dollar or two billion dollar movie um if let's say the justice league let's say in a what if universe the justice league directed by Zack snyder does two billion dollars we're not really going to have these kinds of breakdowns because you see a domino effect similar to what happened in Marvel but it underperformed and um, it pretty much stopped before it ever got started uh, coming off of Black Adam you had Shazam to Fury of the Gods and as I mentioned before both of these movies both of these franchises suffered from being disconnected uh, they say that the rock pushed to make sure that black adam wasn't a villain in the original shazam shazam is already not the most popular character and now you're you're kind of crippling him because you're taking away one of his best assets which is his arch nemesis that you could build a movie around tell a story around um i didn't see it I just know that the projections were low for the first weekend and it, it never recovered from having a terrible opening weekend. They didn't really do much to create the world of Shazam, to do anything to distinguish the world of Shazam from any of his uh, DC counterparts and make him feel special or feel interesting in any unique way. Coming off of Shazam, Fury of the Gods, we have the flash which to date is the biggest flop in comic book movie history just based on the fact that they spent over 400 million dollars including reshoots and advertising and the movie brought home 268 million dollars as of this recording um this is not a bad movie the visuals can't be defended there's no defense you can't apologize for them the visuals some of the sequences in the chrono bowl are really really bad and um and muschetti you know he tried to deflect some of that criticism by saying that this was an artistic choice but none of us really believe him it feels like the the vfx studio that they use just kind of ran out of time there was a lot of controversy surrounding this movie uh, uh particularly because of the star like Ezra Miller was doing a bunch of wild shit behind the scenes um committing felonies you know kidnapping holding young girls against their will you know drugs involved just all sorts of bizarre shit and um I think the fact that James Gunn had already made an announcement about the rebooted DCU and uh the new vision that he had and the new direction that he was taking these properties it just it, it, it just doubled down on the fact that the Snyderverse never got off to a great start. The DCEU, it just it never really got rolling. You know, it didn't have these these home runs. It didn't it didn't knock them out of the park as far as the box office goes. And um, finally, you have Blue Beetle, um, a movie that has a fresh score on Rotten Tomatoes and. The fans just don't care anymore. Um, Blue Beetle was looking to do, I think, 30 million uh, domestically in its opening weekend. Um, 
and it's just it's hard to see all of these failures leading to a success because now Superman Legacy has more pressure on it to uh, overperform, to overachieve. You know, it's it's kind of like we're right back where we started ten years ago, where um, Man of Steel was a quality movie. Um, some people are hot on it, cold on it, but it's a quality movie, but it, it didn't do the Dark Knight numbers. It didn't make a billion dollars, and that's what Warner Brothers expected. So when that didn't happen, it kind of made them panic, and they, uh, they rushed the introduction of Batman and Wonder Woman and the Justice League as a whole, and now you kind of have this mess on top of other decisions that just made the situation worse. And we're kind of in a similar place where the expectations for Superman Legacy, they have to be even higher um, because it has to kind of undo some of the damage that the DCEU has done to the brand. Even though you have new leadership and you have new actors and new stories, is the legacy of the DCEU going to loom over the DCU? and uh, lead to it struggling straight out of the gate. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, this is kind of a long video, kind of a weird video, but I just thought it was so strange that there were seven flops in a row leading to Superman Legacy. So <laughs> and we haven't even, um, we don't know what Aquaman 2 is gonna do, but you know that'll be its own video. But. Thank you for your time. Thanks for rocking with me. Uh, please subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button for your mans and them. Only underscore Wallace TV out.